And you mentioned powerful quarterback and waiting. Now Tory Krug is gone, posting cryptic messages on his Instagram story. Posts, you know, the 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 shot of his St. Louis Blues practice jersey with the eyeball emojis and 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 all that stuff. And it's it, there's definitely some some uh, some animosity towards uh, Bruins uh, upper management. It feels like, uh, especially. I think there definitely is, and I think it's warranted. I think that the way yes, it, the, the the way they treated Krug is not the way you treat a beloved athlete, not in the locker room and in the city. From everything I've heard about the locker room, that, like, Krug's the guy. You know, Char is the silent leader. Bergeron's the one who's going to speak up when you need to hear it. But the guy who kind of instills the camaraderie and, like, you know, the, the, the rather famous Bruins camaraderie that, like, everyone's like, I'll die for this team. I mean, you saw it with the, the press conference after they got eliminated. Everyone was downright distraught, as you – as all most teams are. But yeah. they, it seemed to hit them particularly harder. And uh, I think that was, from my understanding, very Krug driven. That everyone loved Krug. Krug was the guy who always got the boys together. And I think just not even giving him an offer, a real offer, is is not the way you want to handle a, a superstar. I think the guys in the locker room are going to go, "Well, what the fuck's happening upstairs?" And then I think other free agents are going to look at that and say, "I mean, you know, don't get me wrong, money always trumps all." But if you're between a few teams and you're like, well, fucking, I mean, they threw Krug out on his ass and he was a hometown boy, like homegrown, not hometown boy, but homegrown. And, and they, they didn't even care about him. So why would they care about me in the future? Yeah. I mean, I look at that and I remember when it happened, I mean, we knew Krug was probably gone just the way that the talks had been and you know what Krug was saying. I mean, he was clearly pissed and what Sweeney was saying, which was a lot of nothing and a lot of like, we're just trying to move on with this. Um, but St. Louis seemed so off the board. I remember in his press conference the night he signed, uh, they were like, you know, is St. Louis ever in the cars? He's like, no, no, not until today when they call with an offer. And I was just thinking, like, that's a pretty big move to be like, oh, I'm just going to go from Boston to St. Louis, you know, today. I'm, you know, I'm just going to do it. Not and it was so that. odd to me. No, like, no. I, I, I'm sure they did it. I'm sure they covered their bases. Yeah. But, like, if, if the Bruins' offer was, what was it six, six and a half? And, and they pulled it. And they pulled it. But then, like, if St. Louis comes in with a seven, six and a half, right? Something like that. Like, yeah. I, I guess Boston had no intentions of matching it or giving that offer. But I feel like it's like, look, I'm going to take basically the deal you offered. Offer yeah. it again and I'll fucking stay here. Yes. And I think he wanted to stay uh, in Boston. And he said that a million times. I mean, he wanted to be here. The other funny thing is you mentioned him being the guy in the locker room. It's kind of like he's that middle guy. Where, like, you know, you have the Charas and the Bird. Like, if you're a young player, let's say you're like a Connor Clifton and you're a young guy, you know, you're, you're, you don't really know what's going on in the locker room. You're, you know, you're kind of a fish out of water in some sort. You go in and you have a question to ask someone, but you want to ask a veteran, are you going to go to Chara, who's like up here, or Bergeron, right. who's like Jesus Christ himself? <laughs> no, you're going to go to the middle guy. I feel like you're going to go to Tori Krug, who's like sort of in the middle of everyone and sort of like the, the messenger between. Each side, because he was sort of that middle group. Charlie yeah, Coyle, Tory Crew. Like you know, he's it's exactly. Not, he's like an Edelman type. We're like, you're like, oh, you're like, you've been here through thick and thin. You're you're a warrior. We can tell that, but you're also not unapproachable because of your greatness. Yes, you're not going to go to like you know, Patriots. You're not going to go to Tom Brady. I mean, that'd be kind of you'd feel weird doing it. It'd be very open to it. He probably would be very nice, but I feel like it would be very you know, if you had a question about something small not football related, you know, I don't know what it could be, but something, it would be kind of weird to go right to Brady. If like, you'd, you'd yeah, want to go to Brady, Brady after Krug. like local Foxborough spots. Like, hey, where should I go get a beer? Yes. You don't ask Tom Brady yes. that. You don't ask Edelman. Yes, exactly. I, I don't think Brady would be caught dead in Foxborough. Uh, but <laughs> yes, uh, I do think that Krug was that guy. I think losing him obviously sucks. Should they have re-signed him? Take the money, take the, take, you know, should they have re-signed him? Was it smart to sort of move on? I don't fuck. I think. I think his game will age. I do too. Because you know, he's not the he's not a bruiser, which is why people in Boston hate him because he doesn't fucking fight every three seconds. But the not I hate not everyone. Hate, obviously love, but what, why the, that was the knock on him? Like, oh, he doesn't fucking lay the body. Oh, he's five nine. So what do you expect? But the I don't know. Like you think, look at guys like Niedermeyer. Like they played. They were puck moving defensemen who played. I mean, how old was Nimai when he retired? Forties. I, I think he was uh, early forties. Yeah. So like a thirty-one year old with a six-year deal or a seven-year deal, 
you'll probably have some wasted money on the end where he can't really move anymore. But I think barring like a significant injury, I don't see why Tory Krug's, Tory Krug's game can't age. Yeah, I mean, I, I it's just it's funny because I look at this Bruins team, and my opinion during the season was you have to resign Krug. Why? Like the obvious, duh. But that was also when there wasn't going to be a flat cap, and the cap was just going to probably go up to like eighty five or eighty four or whatever it was. But of course, then a pandemic hits, screws all these free agents over, and now the Bruins are caught with a little bit of cap space. But you don't know what it's going to come in future years. You got to pay McAvoy. You got to pay Pasternak down the line. You, you got to do all these things. <laughs> and, I don't know if you have to pay Pasternak. I don't. I don't think. I think he'll play for free. Okay. All right. That's fair. He'll pay, he'll play for like clam chowder down at Little Seafood. You give it what would give him a blank check, but I think if you ask him nicely, David Pasternak will play hockey for free. So you just say, David, we'd really appreciate if he played hockey for free this year. He's gonna be like, Oh, of course, yes, uh, well, obviously. Yes, I love games, I love games. Uh, hockey, <laughs> I love it, it's, it's the best. You're right, though, that is something he would do. He would definitely be like, I mean, if, as long as you give me a gift card to you know, <laughs> the well, not the forest isn't there anymore, but uh, you know, tavern in the square, yeah, I'm dumb. good. <laughs> <laughs> do it for dunking gift cards from the commercials but yeah. you you do have to pay these guys it sucks i wish you didn't have to you could go to them into playing for free you could give them you know supermarket gift cards but i do think that someone like krug the money in the end is going to be tough down the line you don't know what that's going to be like and you also don't know and this might be unpopular you don't know how long this bruins team is going to be contending for like contending contending like the, the cup everyone says cup windows closing you look ahead you know What's the future after Krejci and Bergeron down the middle? What's the future, you know, especially now on defense? Chara might be gone. Krug is gone. Your left side is Grizzlick, Lazan, John Moore. I mean, you don't have, like, a solid left side. Grizzlick's great. But other than that, it's kind of an open season. So you don't know um, what this is going to entail. Also, you needed to get a little bit bigger on the left side. Like, not to sound like one of those, you know, old Bruins fans who, you know, love Milan Lusik. You, you, you do have to have a little bit of size on the back end, and I feel like they were definitely missing that. 